Rounding up a big topic from the week, the president is defending the U.S. approach toward the nearly six-year-long civil war in Syria. He says he understood the desire for action to end the conflict, but it would have been impossible to do, quote, on the cheap without a full U.S. military intervention. The president's remarks came as efforts to evacuate civilians from the last opposition-held areas of the Syrian city of Aleppo came to a halt on Friday. Trump is vowing to get the Gulf states to give us lots of money to help build safe zones in Syria. With Trump set to take office, what will the U.S. approach be toward the war in Syria? That's our topic this half hour, and we want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also send a tweet with your thoughts at Sally Mack, Fox 26. Joining us live in the newsroom is our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico. We have public policy analyst Jackie Bally and Democratic media consultant Mustafa Tamiz. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right, this is a huge humanitarian crisis. President Obama calls it extremely frustrating. It's, it's been one of those things that President Obama just couldn't make go away, and, and it's been a, a, a one, of the, one of the problems that he's faced virtually his entire presidency is this problem in Syria, largely, I think, because of the American public's appetite for war, isn't it? Well, this is, this is a blight on, on the world. Uh, half a million people have been killed uh, in Syria, and we've all basically sat and just watched. Um, uh, Bashar al-Assad has just decimated with the help of uh, Iran and Russia. And uh, throughout this process, we've heard people call, you know, want to create these safe zones. And so why didn't we? Well, look, I mean, if you want to create safe zone, that means that we would have to launch uh, planes against uh, Russian uh, Air Force because it's the Russian Air Force that's been dropping bombs across Syria. And so if you want to create safe zone, that means someone has to launch a military strikes defending against Russian planes. And no one has wanted to do that. So uh, it's, easy to, it's easy to say that. And both Democrats and Republicans have said those safe zones. So it's not just a, a Republican talking point. So a lot of people have, on both sides of the aisle said, let's go create safe zones because it sounds very simple and easy to say we should just do that. And then as Donald Trump has said, we should get other people to pay for it. It also sounds very simple to say, let's create a safe zone, let's get other people to pay for it, but these things aren't easy to do. It seems to me that's a valid point, that you can't have a safe zone unless you're willing to engage Russia, who's already in there uh, helping Syria, and ground, ground troops there to enforce that safe zone. Uh, is Donald Trump prepared to do that? I'm going to start off by agreeing with one of his comments that you do see Republicans and Democrats saying that we should create these safe zones, and, and you've been seeing President-elect Donald Trump now saying it. And it's, it's very equivalent what he's saying to what Hillary Clinton was once describing as a no-fly zone. Donald Trump is saying that we don't, currently he's saying we do not need to have troops on the ground. He's saying uh, get, getting the Gulf states engaged, getting financial support, having stronger negotiations with Russia. Uh, we've seen a different approach to Russia than uh, the president, the current president, and having those discussions in a different direction. Even our president Obama has, uh, our current president Obama has said that his policies have not worked. So it is time to try a different approach, and that's what President-elect Trump is saying. So how do you enforce a safe zone if you don't have troops on the ground? Again, you have. Uh, you give more financial support to those who are there. You have stronger negotiations. You get Saudi and you get uh, Russia to get more engaged. And that's why you have a stronger discussion with those two countries. But it's, it's the Russian planes that are dropping bombs on hospitals and schools. Let's just get that straight. It's, it's the Russian planes that are killing people there. So it's very different to say we want to get Russia's Russia not trying engaged. to help. Russia's right. not trying to help. Russia's the one that also Which helped kill people. Which is what the president people. was trying to say, I think. And that, that, and then, and that part of the issue. I right. could go to Sally, but isn't that part of the issue? Right. Russia's not helping right now because of the very bad situation and, and, and tense uh, terms with the current president. That's why you see president Russia's elect, killing people. That's why you see president like Donald Trump trying to take a different course with Russia, and right. that's why a lot of liberals are not liking Let that. me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, let's check in on Twitter right now. This first tweet from Lee Munsell quoting uh, President Obama in his news conference this week saying, Obama says the responsibility lies with the Assad regime and the allies, allies like Russia, Iran. Uh, he said this blood is on their hands, end quote. And then Steve says the entire Syrian debacle was under Obama's term. Mainstream media never criticized him, but they're gearing up to blame Syria on Trump. Do you agree with that? 
Well, I don't know that you can blame it on Trump. Uh, that the, well, look, you can't blame this on Trump. But the 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 issue is, and Jackie says, if if you change the course with with Russia, it's going to change the course of this war. I recall uh, President Obama saying we need to reset with Russia. Well, look, I mean, let's be clear. The President Obama himself is taking responsibility on this. He sees this yes. as a blight on himself. So this notion of he's not, but but he's also saying, show me an answer. Maybe I'm not smart enough to figure it out because the the the, the ability to say, you know, if if there was an answer, nobody's been able to point that out. But on the other side of this, not acknowledging that Russian planes are the ones that are dropping the bombs to is absurdity. It's, it's absurdity not I, to be able to say that. I, do, 30 seconds I do agree that the president is taking the blame. He is saying that he does not know another course. You're seeing President-elect Trump looking at what the, pre, the current president has done. He is saying we are going to take a different course. We are going to have a different discussion with these countries. Okay, let me ask you this. And, please. like he said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over I again. Agree with it's that, time to change. We're almost out of time, but let me ask you this. If Russia is, is actively trying to help Bashar Assad, and Bashar Assad is the problem, how does engaging with them change the course because the reason why you would engage with them is to get them to stop doing what they're doing again insanity is to c continue to do what you're doing right. over and over again we got to leave it right there change the, dis the discussion with Russia <laughs> we got to leave it right there we'll be back in the next hour with two really good topics. and we will definitely continue the discussion on Russia as well join us in our seven o'clock hour